Hi everyone, welcome to a, a music review of the latest album from Onda Tropica, uh, the record Baile Bucanero. Bucanero, anyway, this is the second full-length album from this Colombian music supergroup, an amazing undertaking spearheaded by Will Holland, producer, and band leader Mario Galliano Toro. Both of them are multi-instrumentalists who play in the band itself, whose first record in 2012 featured upwards of 40 musicians on the album, 26 complete tracks on the deluxe expanded edition of this record. This project is huge. It is gigantic. So many songs, so much material, so many musicians. And not only is this album an amazing tribute to the history, the sound, the roots of Latin music, but also this is a really modern record in a lot of respects too. There are tons of tracks on this thing where the band fuses cumbia or uh, various shades of South American folk music with rock music, with funk, with jazz, some hip hop, some ska, little reggae. Now I love this record, I loved this record when it came out, one of my favorites of the year, but how could such greatness be repeated again, because the sessions that went into this album were so huge, again, so many musicians from different cultural backgrounds, from different musical backgrounds, different ages too. Getting the stars to align so perfectly on this second album here, in my opinion, could be like winning the lottery twice. Though it does seem like Will and Mario did their best to make the same magic happen again, the band's approach on this album is clearly more measured than it was on the debut. This album, by comparison, is just 15 tracks, just an hour of material, 35 musicians on the record. And for the most part, I think the band sticks pretty closely to the cultural roots of whatever style of Latin music they're playing on any given song on this record. Now, that's not to say this record feels limited. I mean, there's a ton of variety across the landscape of South American music. So many folk music and dance music styles, and there are moments on here where they're fusing that with funk and with jazz. But there aren't as many surprising or weird or out there genre fusions on this record, in my opinion. Outside of some of the material that they recorded in one of the two locations featured on this record, Old Providence Island, which from what I've read uh, actually has a pretty thriving reggae and dance hall scene. So you do have a couple tracks on here, Trustin and Come Back Again, where you have this Latin music, this Latin instrumentation mixing with the sounds of reggae and dance hall, which makes for two of the most stone cold and kind of laid back and somewhat gritty tracks on the entire record, especially with the vocalists, especially with the rapping. But overall, I'm just not hearing as many risks on this album. I don't feel the production or the instrumentation is quite as vibrant either. The heaviness and the denseness of the instrumentation on the debut just does not feel like it turns up on this new record very often. There are a few exceptions. Campesino is certainly one with its bright horns, its great accordions, the dreary little background choral vocals uh, that are kind of a little dusty. There's some punchy rhythms on this track and a really dramatic top-notch lead vocal to kind of guide listeners through the song. I'm equally enamored with the song uh, De Mar a Mar, which is way more stripped back in comparison, but still colorful, still bright, a very folky background. I love the plucky metallic lead melodies all over this track, as well as the very bright, warm, soulful, passionate uh, chorus harmonies on this track too. The vocals and lyrics also take a center stage on the track's commotion and hummingbird, and what makes these songs stand out in the track list is that oh, we actually have English lyrics on the song here. The simmering sensuality of the song Commotion kicks the entire album off really well. The song Hummingbird is, is quite sad, quite dreary, but easily one of the most beautiful cuts on the entire record. Compare any one of these cuts to a song like Estar Contigo, where the band is kind of locked into a single groove, they're jamming on it a little bit, the track is taking a slightly funkier, jazzier approach. It's very linear, there's not a whole lot to speak of in terms of structure, it's really more about just kind of creating a groove, creating a vibe. But it's just the way the band goes about doing that that really rubs me the wrong way, with this galloping beat set against these kind of tired old man vocals, you know, I, I hate to sort of, you know, throw them under the bus like that, but they're not very good. I think they would have sounded better had they been wrapped up 
up in some brighter, more interesting instrumentation. But for the most part, uh, aside from the drums, the other sort of focal point on this track are these kind of skipping, glossy, semi-ambient keyboard chords that last for almost the duration of the entire song. Uh, the track feels really hollow, really empty. There's, there's not really a whole lot exciting about it uh, because these keyboards just kind of sound like I'm listening to uh, some sort of completely unrelated ambient piece playing simultaneously against just a Latin rhythm section and a weary old vocalist. The vibe gets really old really fast and for whatever reason this is one of the longest songs on the entire record. There are some other cuts that are equally linear and they do a little bit better of a job of, of keeping the heat up, keeping the intensity up, keeping the energy up, but not by much. The song Lazalipso, for example, uh, while this does start off like a very solid piece of Latin jazz with some shouting, passionate vocals kind of guiding us through the track, by the time the solos come and we start, you know, getting some solo trade-offs going back and forth, I think the, uh, um, I don't know, the momentum of the song really kind of suffers. Especially since some of the horns, especially the guitars on the track, are not mixed all that well. They sound a little muddy. I'm not sure if this more rough, punky kind of on the fly and lightning in a bottle direction uh, complemented tracks like this in the in the track listing all that much. It's kind of forgivable on the song Caldo Pareo where the performance actually is intense, actually is fiery. The rhythm section on this track is insane. There are these twangy, kind of dirty, dusty guitar leads flying in every direction all over the cut. And there are these wild kind of squawky woodwinds that play uh, throughout much of the track too that I love. The performance is just fire. I wish the recording and the mix was a little bit better, a little brighter, a little more vibrant, but the performance is awesome. It's just that the, the other cuts that sound, you know, just as kind of dusty, but are played a little bit more laid back, a little more reserved, they really kind of fall into the background for me. Even with some touches of dubby, weird experimental effects, or some quirky guitar, or synthesizers, or some kind of rhythmic gimmick to give the song a little bit of character or personality. Like on the song Bogota, where uh, many of the lead vocals and the background vocals, too, sort of get washed out in these echoey effects that make the track sound like some kind of you know, <laughs> a Latin music dreamscape, almost in a creepy way. Unfortunately, this album, while there are some really good things about it, it's not the modern, sleek, bright, and almost overwhelming sound that I loved so much on the band's debut several years ago. And I don't really think there's quite as much chemistry between the band members on this record as there was in the past. I can't say how much personnel got swapped in, how much got swapped out. Maybe not many, if, if any at all. But there were certainly more cuts on this record where it just felt like the playing came off really kind of mild. There are a few more exceptions that I could mention, like uh, Cumbio Bucanero. The second half of this track is super fast, super intense, really great playing. Uh, the closing track on here, Just a Moment, while it is not one of the more intense songs, it is a very sad, lonely guitar piece played very dramatically uh, to end the album off in a tasteful way. The horns do quite a bit to enhance the uh, the power, the grandiosity of this moment on the record. And the track Malaria is an awesome trumpet accordion jam. You know, it's moments like this that are so... Uh, it just feels like there's such an intense trade-off back and forth between each musician on the record when they're soloing, and the rhythm section is just blazing, it's just moving at such a hot, fast click. It's, it's spots like this that I just can't get enough of on this record, and I just don't understand why there, there weren't more of. The performances just don't feel as consistently muscular as they were on the debut. And, you know, for sure, there were a few tracks on that record that were kind of goofy, were detour-ish, were one-offs, but, you know, they definitely provided uh, some quirk and some character to a really long, massive track listing of tracks that were just so incredibly produced, so incredibly written and performed. These weird one-off tracks just did a great job of padding out the more central cuts on the record. Uh, it just doesn't feel like there's as many central cuts on this new album over here. There's just less this time around. And that's not to say that this record is a total disappointment or anything like that. 
that, far from the case. Onda Tropica came out with such an amazing, immense album from right out of the gate. Um, even though I was looking forward to this album, I was still sitting here thinking, how could they possibly live up to it? How could you follow up an album like that? It's, ugh. I would be afraid to. I would be afraid to. And that's not to say that they can't come out with another great record in the future. It's just that with this new album over here, they're clearly trying to make an album that's a little bit more manageable, a little more straightforward, a little more concise, and maybe in a way uh, appealing to uh, a wider audience with some of the songs here being played in a somewhat more conventional way. And then you have those couple of tracks that incorporate dance hall and rap music. I appreciate the band trying to do something a little bit more direct on this record. I personally prefer the grandiosity of the previous project. Hopefully the band can return to that, uh, but even if they don't, I hope this new direction kind of works out for them. Because ultimately, at the end of the day, I would love to hear more music from these guys regardless. Uh, I think what they have going here is such a special thing. And they're one of the few notable and sizable projects out there right now that are really starting to scratch away at a lot of North America's uninterest and lack of knowledge uh, when it comes to this style of music. If you're unfamiliar with these guys, please check this album out, regardless of what I've said about it, and definitely give a listen to their debut album as well. I'm feeling a decent strong seven on this record, Tratran. Zishin, have you given this album a listen? Did you love it? Did you hate it? What would you rate it? You're the best, you're the best. What should I review next? Hit the like if you like, please subscribe, and please don't die. Just stay alive and keep on watching the reviews. Uh, other videos and links next to my head I think you should check out. Subscribe to the channel. Official website, too. Um, forever.